Okay, everybody, this is the last set of uh, video lectures. I'm going to talk briefly about the lymphatic system right now, and then most of this is going to be over immunity. I didn't really create a PowerPoint for the lymphatic system. I just was going to do maybe like a, a little brief overview of the fact that the lymphatic system, if we say this, let's just talk about the lymphatic system for just a few minutes, okay? So the lymphatic system actually has three main functions. So one of those functions is going to be a fluid balance, just really simplistically. You wanna go back to cardiovascular system and look at capillary exchange one more time. And what you want to realize is that, yes, you, I mean, you have this capillary system, right? Like we have our arteriole that leads into our capillary here, that leads into a venule. And if you recall, the venule didn't pick everything back up again once we lost it at the arteriole side of the capillary. We don't pick everything up because we want veins to be under low pressure. So we don't, we're not gonna pick up all that fluid. So there's gonna be some fluid stuck here in the interstitial space. We don't want like body volume or blood volume to drop completely. So what we want to do is still suck up some of this residual fluid. And what you're gonna have here is you're gonna have a lymphatic capillary that's gonna help you do that. Okay, so the lymphatic capillary kind of weaves in here. And I was gonna try to make a valve. It's been a while since I had to draw the lymphatic capillaries, but I think we'll do like that and then kind of like open like this. I know that doesn't exactly look like a capillary, but that's exactly kind of how the capillary is going to look, the lymphatic capillary. So as you have extra fluid out here, it's going to create pressure that pushes on these one-way valves in the lymphatic capillary and basically sucks all that residual fluid in the interstitial space back in to a circulatory system. And in this case, that's the lymphatic system. So remember, that's going to then dump everything into the veins right between the internal jugular and the subclavian vein. So it's gonna help us make sure that we, we actually re return fluid back to the veins. And at the same time, because you have these large one-way valves, you can actually pick up fats and fat-soluble um, items. So here we're also going to transport lipids. Lipids are fats and anything that's fat-soluble. To understand this, you have to go back to the digestive system. And you have to remember that in our villi, in the small intestine, or if you recall, we yes, we have an artery and that artery is going to become a vein. And essentially there's like a capillary bed that's gonna go between that, that's gonna pick up everything that we're absorbing at uh, the villi in the small intestine. And then don't forget between that, there was like a green thing. That was the lacteal. Well, sorry, I should draw my lacteal first. Okay, so the lacteal is just a special lymphatic capillary. And again, it does this same exact process over here, which is when you have too much interstitial fluid, it's going to pop open those one-way valves, suck all that fluid up along with anything that's large. And in this case, you know, those chylomicrons that you're absorbing are rather large. So it absorbs those chylomicrons, okay. The third function is immunity. You want to think about this as a defense system for the body. So we're gonna have a defense system. Because you have these lymphatic capillaries that can pick up anything, that means that pathogens and, and, and free floating antigens can basically just take advantage of that and float around the body and then disrupt body processes. So it's quite possible for there to be, you know, a little virus out here. Sorry, my 
my virus is going to be like that, they get sucked up into the lymphatic capillary. So now we have to be able to remove that virus before it transports too far into the body. And then there's a secondary um, thing that we also need to take it into account, and that's blood. So it's possible that the virus gets, you know, sucked up into blood because they're really, really small. They're smaller than a cell and now it's floating around blood. So how do we get rid of that? We're going to filter it mostly in two ways. So our defense system, we're going to use lymph nodes. And those are going to filter lymph. And then we're going to use the spleen. And that's going to help us filter blood. Okay, so I wanted you to think about that in class, the fact that you have two types of circulatory systems moving fluids, you have to be able to filter both of those. So what that leads to is our whole immunity part. Okay, so the body actually has two defense systems. One is called the innate defense system. Um, this is also referred to as nonspecific. defenses. These are the things you're born with. In place, okay, so you're born with these systems in place. And primarily, these are your first and your second line of defenses. So you see you have a first line of defense. And that first line of defense is a boundary, a barrier, like a fence. Just think about that, you know, like putting a fence around your country. The uh, United States is trying that, but it's not doing a very good job about it. Honestly, it's kind of stupid. So you want to think about like that fence that's going to prevent things from getting in. So that includes your skin. That includes your mucous membranes. Okay. So think about you have openings like your nose, your mouth, there's the anal opening, there's the urethral opening, all of these have to also be protected against. So that's where your mucous membranes come in and you are gonna have either mucus or you might have some sort of acidic secretions. That are gonna prevent pathogens from entering, okay? And I realize I kind of forgot to go over like antigens, antibodies, pathogens, but I, go through that in, in the lecture. Like, I think you, you guys can get that on your own. Really what I wanted to do here was talk a little bit some uh, more about these internal defenses. So you want to think about if your first line of defense is penetrated, so there's an opening in your fence, or the pathogen is really good about getting through the small openings in the fence. Hey, the lab room. Okay, well, actually, that's not so bad. Um, then your second line of defense will come online. So this means the pathogen got into your body and once it's now in your body, you're gonna have to take care of it. We're not gonna look at all of these. I'm just gonna talk about a, a couple of them. One of them is phagocytes. So these are white blood cells, specific white blood cells, things like neutrophils, eosinophils, and macrophages. And essentially what they do is they target pathogens and eat them. Okay, so they'll eat pathogens or antigens or debris. How they do this is a really simplistic process where let's just say we're going to have like, I don't know, some debris here. You might have debris that's uh, tagged with antibodies. And then essentially the cell is going to come in here. And so like you have your white blood cell like that. What's going to happen is the white blood cell is, is going to kind of pucker out its membrane like that, and it's going to bring that antigen inside of its body. Sorry. I don't know why I drew it so small. Let's just draw it a little bit, a little bit bigger. 
there is your phagocyte, okay? And it's gonna recognize, let's say there's a bacteria there that's covered in some antibodies. Okay, those are our antibodies. This phagocyte, essentially what it's gonna do is its cell membrane is gonna kind of open up a little bit here, kind of just like opening your mouth, essentially. And it's going to bring this pathogen in to a membrane sac. That membrane sac is called a vesicle. Whoops. You just got your antibodies like that. Okay, so you have your vesicle. This vesicle is gonna fuse with a lysosome, okay? So you'll see that lots of granulocytes, things like the eosinophils and the neutrophils that have all these granules inside of them have lysosomes. And the lysosomes are basically just filled with acidic components, acidic enzymes. When these two things merge together, what ends up happening is that you essentially dissolve the pathogen. So now the pathogen gets dissolved and the cell is just gonna do something called exocytosis where that vesicle merges with the membrane and releases all these particles, the waste, okay. And some people are like, isn't that bad? Well, just think a bacteria is mostly what proteins, carbohydrates, DNA. You just cut that up into smaller pieces and no big deal. Then another one, so that's uh, phago, phagocytes. We'll talk about inflammation later. I just wanna go over the antimicrobial proteins. So there are two types of antimicrobial proteins. One are interferons. And the other one is the complement system. These two types of antimicrobial, whoops, antimicrobial or antipathogens basically do different things. So for interferons, let's kind of build a cell right here and then I'm gonna build another body cell over here. Interferons work like this. If you have a virus, what a virus does is it attaches to your cell and then it will insert its DNA into your DNA. It does this so that you can make more viruses. It's using your cell to make more viruses. Eventually, those viruses will explode out of the cell once the cell's done with it or once the virus is done with it, okay? What interferons are, are going to be a little piece of your genome, so a little gene, that's basically going to make an interferon protein. So this infected cell makes an interferon protein that is gonna come over here to the healthy cells and attach. When this interferon attaches to the healthy cell, it basically tells this healthy cell to make a blocking protein. Okay, whoops, sorry. So when you're making that blocking protein, now as the virus tries to get into this healthy cell, it's blocked from gaining entry. So thus it interferes with viruses infection, right? That's why this is for viruses. Okay. The complement protein system is for bacteria. What's gonna happen is you have a bacterial invader. You're going to see that there's going to be antibodies bound to this bacterial invader and you can either have a macrophage come and eat it or essentially you can have cells that are going to release these complement proteins. Okay, uh, let me pick a different color. Oof, maybe red and green are a bad mix. We have orange. So what happens is these complement proteins essentially build a hole in the bacterial cell. And because there is more fluid outside of the bacterial cell out here, 
that fluid will rush into the bacterial cell and it's going to cause it to explode. And as it explodes, then the bacteria can't infect the body anymore, all right? So there is the, a fever. A fever is just a higher temperature. Look over the PowerPoint to help you with that one. And then I'll go over the inflammation process in the next uh, set of videos.